Minister Beck, you are recommending that Germany should tighten up its immigration policies. What is Denmark doing right that makes it uh, a good model for a country like Germany to follow? Well, I think, first of all, it's the German uh, decision, the German government's decision, but I believe that uh, we have had some very good experience with especially return of uh, uh, rejected asylum seekers so that people who don't get asylum, who doesn't have any legal claim on, on asylum, they uh, return to their countries of origin, and we managed that for the past uh, five years to change those numbers uh, dramatically, and I believe that any country in Europe, also Germany, could uh, could do the same thing and, and make sure that, that there's a difference between the people who actually need asylum, who are fleeing countries that are in war, personally persecution, uh, differ them from from the people that are coming for economic reasons, and I don't think those two groups should be treated equally. Denmark's reputation on the question of migration in recent years is uh, that it has a pretty harsh policy compared to some other countries. Do you think that that reputation is fair and are you happy with that? Well, I believe that uh, sometimes it lacks the nuances uh, that, that is important and, and that is for one thing that we have one of the world's highest development aid percentage that we are also uh, trying to build up institutions around migration. We want to change it so that people who actually have uh, the most need for, for, uh, for protection, for example, people who live in camps in Central Africa, get a better chance as uh, compared to people who travel across the Mediterranean. But of course, I think it's important to have a strict migration policy and first of all to make sure that the people who decide upon migration is the national parliaments. Uh, it's not everyone else, it's the national parliaments just as any other decision of importance for a country. Uh, they should be decided by, among the people who are elected for, for that purpose. Here in Germany, Olaf Scholz has said it's important to get tough uh, on particularly illegal migration. Uh, but at the same time, the German government has pointed out that substantial immigration is needed for economic reasons to uh, bring in skilled labour. So where do you think is the right balance on that question? Well, I definitely think that, that the German government has a point in saying that we need uh, people for our labour market, but I think that it's important to distinguish between just an open door for everyone and then to... to um, to claim there, to get people who have the, need, the skills that, that we need in, in the European economies. And I think that is the most important part. I think that, that we're going to need more, uh, more uh, skilled people on our labor markets. But that is definitely not the same as opening for migration in a broad term. And uh, I think it's also important to, to underscore that, that you need to have legal ways to get into a country, to get a work permit, for example, and, and this is an important part of the, of the total um, uh, uh, flow of migrants uh, that, are, uh, that are in the legal schemes. There's been talk about fixing the EU's migration and asylum system uh, for decades, really. Uh, in recent years, it seems that more countries are determined to do something about it uh, and uh, change the rules. Why do you think that there's this focus on that question now? Well, I believe the, the reason is that uh, we have a lot of uh, migrants coming to Europe in these years. Austria has had a very high number in recent years. Also in Germany, in Netherlands, Belgium, other countries are experiencing a much higher number than the, they can actually integrate in, in their countries. So if you're in a small municipality in the Ruhr district and you have 2,000 uh, refugees in a municipality of 40,000 people, then uh, of course it's uh, almost impossible to make sure that they get a place to live, they get the right uh, language uh, courses, they get the introduction to the German labour market, and of course this is a situation that, 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 that changes people's uh, viewpoint on, on migration because it, it, um, it also threatens some of the coherence of our society, and, and I think that's an important part of this discussion also. Denmark has a policy of uh, sending uh, some asylum seekers to a third country like Rwanda while their asylum applications are being processed. Uh, but in, in November of last year, the UN Committee Against Torture criticised that policy, saying uh, that it might mean that uh, some people would not be safe in a country like Rwanda. What is your response uh, to that criticism and to the idea uh, that uh, there are safety concerns uh, for asylum applicants in third countries? 
Well, first of all, uh, it has always been a very important element of our discussions with Rwanda on uh, 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 reception center that uh, the people were treated with respect to human rights in all senses of the conventions that Denmark has signed, and this has been. Uh, from the very start, a very strong pillar in our discussions, and, and I think that is acknowledged on both sides of the table, but also to to say that, that now, today, we are working primarily on the European level to try to make a European model for reception centers in one or more countries outside the European Union. I think there's a lot of uh, people moving in these discussions and, and uh, being more open to a sustainable solution that includes also the transfer of uh, asylum claims outside of the Union. It does seem that now there are uh, several countries that are supporting this idea of third country processing of asylum seekers, notably uh, the UK with its Rwanda policy. Uh, it's also been talked about here in Germany. Uh, and you have also praised the Italian government for their uh, agreement with the Albanian government to process asylum seekers there. What would you say to the criticism that this is a case of rich countries outsourcing the problem to poor countries and letting them do Europe's dirty work? Well, I would say that, that part of these discussions should also be uh, to make sure that we take a quota of refugees, either through the UN quota refugee system or other refugee systems, so that we, of course, take some responsibility for the situation uh, around Europe. But I also want to say that, of course, it's a legitimate political view to say that you want let's say 200,000 uh, refugees a year in a country, but that should be decided upon in a parliament or in another forum where you have democratically elected politicians that can take responsibility. Now it's just happening. No one decided upon it, uh, and, and no one knows how to, how to stop it if we don't get any uh, kind of uh, uh, third uh, country arrangements with, for example, reception centers outside the European Union. So it's fundamentally a democratic uh, question, this, uh, this matter of, of, uh, of putting back control of migration into the national parliaments. And finally, uh, as I mentioned, there does seem to be a change of mood in several countries on this issue, a new focus for action and at European level. Do you see that change of mood and are you confident that Europe can get a grip of its migration issue? Yes, definitely. I uh, was appointed to this post one and a half years ago, and at that point we were the only country in Europe promoting the idea of third safe countries. Then we have the Austrians who, who supported us, and, and since then many other countries had had uh, come to this uh, viewpoint. And I think that, that it is moving and it's possible in the European Union when we agree on something, the, the Union is very effective at, at, uh, at making the, the concrete solutions. And I think this will also be the, the case in, in the matter of third party arrangements that can make sustainable uh, solutions to migration crisis where you don't support human smugglers with billions of euros, where you don't have thousands of people dying uh, in the Mediterranean each year, but you have a system where the people who have the, the most real claim for asylum also gets it first. Minister Beck, thank you very much for talking to Deutsche Welle. Well, thank you very much.